The political situation in Weimar Germany changed quite drastically for the Nazis, but we want to look at how it led to Hitler becoming chancellor, essentially the top political job in the country. See, in 1928, in the height of the German Golden Age, 3% of the vote went to the Nazi party. Basically nothing, no power at all. In 1930, at just the start of the Great Depression, there was another election and the Nazis received 18% of the vote. You've already seen through limp paper all of the reasons why people started to vote Nazi at that time. And really, those problems get worse and worse. In 1932, next election, there is another well, another go increase in Nazi support where they've got now 30 to 40 percent of the vote in Germany. The Nazis in 1932 were the largest political party in the country, which makes you think Hitler should become chancellor now. But that is not exactly true. The chancellor is a political job chosen by the president, who at this time is a guy called Hindenburg. Hindenburg did not like the look of the Nazi party. They were violent. They used uh, bullying, bullying tactics and they spread hate, hate, well, rhetoric that was about hating other groups of people. So he didn't choose Hitler to be chancellor. He chose another man called von Papen. Von Papen was in power for a couple of months, but realised he couldn't get anything done. The power of the Chancellor is that you can create laws if 50% of the Reichstag votes with you. The Reichstag is made up of loads of political parties because of proportional representation, and they're all out arguing and shouting with each other. And he realised that 30 40 to 40% of the Nazis were not agreeing with him. So von Papen realised he couldn't do his job. He realised he couldn't make laws. So what you do in that situation as a politician is, if I can't do my job, why am I doing my job? I'm going to have to resign. He resigned and called a new election so that the parties could be reset. So we could maybe see if the, someone could have a proper majority and maybe get something done. And what happened was with that new election in 1932, the Nazis got further support, moving closer and closer to around 40% in charge. And at this point, Hitler really thought he deserved the job of chancellor. And Hindenburg still thought, no, not deserve it, and chose a different man, a man called von Schleicher, to become the Chancellor instead. And von Schleicher found the exact same situation was there present. He could not make any laws. The Nazi party weren't agreeing with him, and he couldn't get anyone else to agree with him. He ended up resigning as well. And at this point, Hitler demanded the job of Chancellor to Hindenburg. He said, I need to become Chancellor. I'm the only person in Germany who can at least create that 50% vote. I am the only person in Germany who can run the country. And Hindenburg had to agree. Hindenburg appointed Hitler Chancellor in January 1933. And you can see the picture of it happening, bottom left hand corner. And he even appointed von Papen, that previous guy, as vice chancellor, uh, like the second in command to see if they could maybe control Hitler. How wrong they were. This little story gives you a bit of context as to the situation that lets the Nazis get into power. This is the recruited by Hindenburg moment. The situation brought about by the Great Depression and the increased support for the Nazi party did play a part in Hitler taking power. But this is the moment where it begins. Just for your own notes, can you describe what the political situation for the Nazis was like in late Weimar Germany? What happened to von Papen? Why Hitler wasn't being appointed chancellor? Why they put von Schleicher in charge? And Maybe even the reason why Hitler was finally chosen to be, well, finally recruited to be chancellor. If you know your answers to those, you know your answers to this, this section. Good luck. See you later.